Hare Krishna. So this is Navneet and I welcome you to Vyasa Astro channel. Today I have my dearest and most knowledgeable spiritual soul on this planet, Babajit Ji with me. Babajit Ji, uh, I would not say that you are welcome on my channel. This is your channel and we thought <laughs> that uh, you know we should sit together and discuss something today. So yes. bahut bahut you're most welcome sir. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Navneet Ji. Always a pleasure to talk to you, meet you and uh, record with you and see your videos also. And uh, first of all, uh, once again, congratulations for uh, reaching 100,000 YouTube subscribers. It's a great feat to achieve. And uh, yeah, I was very enthusiastic when you messaged me that uh, let's do some recording together. So we will upload this in both the channels. And uh, if anybody in my channel is not aware of Navneetji, then, <laughs> well, then I, I can't say much. Uh, you will get to see it yourself today during this conversation. And you can also see his uh, website and his YouTube channel. I will pin it down in the description. So what's the topic today, Navneetji? <laughs> so, uh, Babaji Ji, today uh, I would like to discuss on uh, Mahadashas. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, comments on uh, various YouTube channels and from a lot of people, even on my videos that, uh, Namriji, can you give us one remedy, a master remedy for the Dasha that we are running? And, uh, you know, although we don't have such master remedies for uh, <laughs> any such, uh, you know, Mahadashas, but on the same time, you have to understand uh, that spiritual, you know, energy, the energy of a graha to do certain activities in the Mahadasha of that graha. So that whatever you are doing, suppose uh, a native comes to you and you tell him that, okay, in your Mangal Mahadasha, you're supposed to do these two or three, you know, things and then slowly you will start uh, you know getting the benefit and if you don't get the benefit at least you'll get that energy and positivity to face your karma to face your mm -hmm. product you know that's where where the remedies work the most right but then you know this one thing that we are going to tell you know the entire community here is that if you do in a particular dasha can actually help the other remedies to work for you, okay? Because mm -hmm. you are actually going to the root of a graha and trying to understand that what is required in that you know time period. So that's something that I wanted to uh, discuss. And we can take all the nine planets, grahas. We can uh, begin from uh, the king of all the planets, Surya Devata. All right. Yes. So, uh, Babaji Ji, you know, based on my experience of, uh, you know, giving consultations to more than 25,000 clients, you know, in last 15 years, one thing that I've realized in Surya Mahadasha is that whatever happens in Surya Mahadasha, if it is happening for bad, it is going to be very, very cruel. Okay. Oh. Surya will not give you time to react. Mm. Right? Suppose if there's an accident which is going to happen, or if there is a cardiac arrest which is going to happen, or a heart problem which is going to come, at times you get an hour or two hours of time to reach hospital and get those first aids to, you know, bring yeah. your, drive your heart. But if mm. it's happening in Surya Mahadasha, and this event has to be caused in Surya, Surya is not going to give you time. So if you want me to list a graha, which is the most powerful and the most cruel planet, when it comes to settling your prarabdha, it is not Saturn, it is not Rahu, it is Surya. Okay, it is Surya. Right? And a lot of you who are watching this video have gone through the Surya Mahadasha would have experienced this even in the antras of Surya. Hmm. For an example, a small example, when 
sun rises in the morning did he even give you one minute if you are late <laughs> that okay i'm waiting for you for one minute okay Mm -hmm. yes. Or maybe I can wait for you for five minutes. Yeah. This graha will not give you time. And this graha has ability to come and make him, you know, make you see himself. That's yeah. Incredible. Yes. Pratashit graha. Yes. And he has a direct impact. Correct. And he's not going to give you a microsecond time. Not there. If it is a time of sunrise, it is a time of sunrise. Simple. Wow. If it is a time of sunset, it's a time of sunset. And if that sunset is your life, if this dasha is bringing sunset to your money or to your health or to your life, you are not going to get time. Hmm, okay. And that brings Surya to a nature of highest cruelty in our perception. Although right. it's not cruelty. But since we are in this Manushya or Jiva, we think that we should get some time, you know, we should get some relaxation from somewhere. That's our mindset. Correct. Right? So, one remedy that I have seen and that has really worked uh, for many people in the Surya Mahadasha is to, you know, start reading Shiv Mahapuran. Hmm. See, Shiv Mahapuran is a Shakti or a, even a Shiva Sadhana or just chanting the word Shiv, 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 Shiv. Because he is the only one he is the only one who can ask Surya to delay. And Surya will have to abide. Mm, correct. Surya cannot say no to anyone except either the Rudra Rupa of Shiva, which is Anuman, or it's the Shiva himself. Correct. So in your Surya Mahadasha, if you are really struggling in life, no matter you're going to you are pull the devatas or you are doing X, Y, Z remedies, doing Gayatri mantras or giving Jala to the Surya. Nothing will actually work for you if you are not dedicating yourself to Mahadev. Going mm. to your Jyotirlingas is very, very important. Doing just by praying Shiva, 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 Shiva. Simple one word, Shiva, 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 Shiva or doing Om Namah Shiva or any mantra that has the word Shiva in it is going to benefit you the most in the Surya Mahadasha. Mm. Right? This is something that I have experienced. Right? And if you belong to any religion, okay, the word Shiva means auspiciousness. I must tell you. Right. So right. if you are from any part of the world, and you are from any religion. I never said you say Om Namah Shivai. I never said that. If you listen to me carefully, I just said say, say Shiva, 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 Shiva. And when the, when you use word Shiva, it is from no religion. It's mm. simply auspicious. Right. Right. So when you say this Shiva, that is the time. Even if Surya practically will not give you, you know, any time, the cruelty will remain. But this word Shiva will prepare you, you know, to face that, okay, I can get this situation. I'm mentally prepared. I should take some initiatives. Because when you say word Shiva, Shiva will help you take initiatives in life. All the Shiva Bhakts, you know, if you meet someone who says, okay, I've done this initiative in my life, you ask him, what happened to you before, you know, you took this initiative? It's just suddenly, you know, I get some inclination towards Shiva. I went to a Jyotirlinga. You know, I met someone who gave me a Rudraksha. Or I, I started reading uh, Shiv Chalisa. Something, you know, which is around Shiva will happen to him. And then he's taken some initiative and reached to the highest level. So in the Surya Mahadasha, right, if things are going haywire, nothing is working for you. Shiva will work. That is guaranteed. 
<laughs> so that was for Shiva and that's for Surya. Now for Chandra, okay, all those people who have moon Mahadasha going on and uh, you're having a bad time, things are not working, the placement of Chandra because of your Prarabdha is not good, okay, in your chart. You need to sing, dance, and chant. Simple. You see, when you look at Shri Krishna's chant, moon is exalted in the lagna. And it is a Vargottama moon. That means moon is also exalted and Vargottama in the Navamsha. Right. And moon is the karaka of, you know, uh, being an artist, singing. Mm music and dance and nourishment through singing. So that is why when you go to a Krishna temple, you'll see the Krishna devotees singing and dancing on the road and doing Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you know. So Hari Nam Sankirtan. So all these things are coming because of the Chandra, because Chandra is the mind. And mm -hmm. if you apply these mind, I mean, I mean, you can sing and dance on anything which belongs to your religion anything not just the krishna but anything you can sing you can dance even if you go to you know any spiritual place belong to any religion you can go dancing there you can sing there you can chant there so if you are in the moon dasha this is something or at least keep a small function at your home once in a month hmm. or maybe on your birthday so 10 birthdays you know in the moon mahadasha there should be some 10 functions on your birthday or maybe on the Tithi Pravesh day, right? Where right. you get that small Sankirtan at your home or maybe a part, you know, that you do in the Sikh Dharam, you know, or anything. Maybe a small prayer and small function where you're singing something, right? If you do that, right, in the Chandra Mahadasha, whatever other remedies that you're doing for Chandra, those remedies will start giving you results. Because now Chandra is happy with what Chandra is happy himself. Because Chandra yes. has to sing and dance. Yes. 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 Right? So that is one super or a master remedy that you can do when you are in the Chandra Mahadasha. Right? So when it comes to Mars, Babaji Ji, you want to say something on Chandra, Babaji Ji? Yeah, I think uh, I would like to first add a bit on Surya. Yeah, sure. So Surya, as you as we know, is also the Karaka for the, the whole existence because there's nothing without the sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> so what I have seen people, uh, or maybe let me go the reverse way around, what I have seen that people do and then they get into trouble in Sandasha. <laughs> So that is something which I advise people don't do it. So what I have seen is uh, many times people they when their son Mahadasha is going on because Surya also represents government and authority figures. So they always if Surya is badly placed they may get into trouble with some authority figures and all this. Now at that time yeah. you will be tempted yeah. very bad yeah. to speak badly against your senior. Yes. Now, your senior may be the most crooked person to yeah. have ever lived in the earth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, or your organization might be a crooked organization. Your country may be a crooked country. Okay. There, there could be a number of things which are, which are going against you. But when you are in Surya Dasha, not only just Surya Dasha, any Dasha, but specifically in Surya Dasha, uh, please. Uh, avoid uh, speaking bad words or you know slang words or something like that you know, because that will further damage your karma uh, from a karmic perspective and also uh, try to if try to not do politics for wrong reasons right if you have to defend yourself and you need to do politics that's fine uh, but don't do politics to pull somebody down okay that is also not good don't, don't speak badly against your uh, karma bhumi like uh, recently uh, somebody had asked me there was a person because I stay in Germany 
to those another person who is also staying in Germany. Uh, he had asked me in Instagram that um, he doesn't like Germany. He likes India more, you know, because of he gave like some four or five reasons. So then he asked me, what should I do? Should I stay in Germany or go back to India? So I said, see, that, that is what decision. But what is important is that when you are in Germany, your India is like your uh, Janma Bhumi, okay? But this Germany now is your Karma Bhumi, okay? So do not keep uh, speaking bad things because that will uh, that will further reinstantiate this feeling inside you that you are not in a good place, okay? So if you don't like, then you move back to India or to US or to UK. That's fine for some reason or the other. But then once you go back to India, don't keep bitching about India, you know? There's interference of relatives you know there's overpopulation there is pollution there's this that you know so so that is something you should not do so don't criticize the one who is giving you things you know, like your homeland or the government you know un unless things are like very bad you can take action but do not uh, speak foul words yeah. and regarding the moon as you said very beautifully uh, to sing to dance and to you know chant especially so yeah, this is something I have seen. Uh, people with a very strong moon, they, they they sometimes have have this thing that, oh, I don't understand logic. Sometimes they think like this. But actually, it is not that they are not logical or they are illogical, but they are trying to see logic through the eye of emotions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, sometimes in Moon Mahadasha, you will see, uh, I have also seen this with people that, uh, you are trying to convince somebody. Yeah. If 10 reasons why you should do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then the person, it's like, uh, as they say in English, you know, it's like falling in deaf ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But actually it is not that it is falling in deaf ears, but it is like the person is so emotionally driven that the yeah. person is not able to see the logic uh, because emotions have kind of you know i won't say overpowered but uh he because but the dasha does it sometimes you know you feel emotions are more important than logic so then uh, you can ask the person what is uh the most important thing for you now so then when you ask this thing then the person will start speaking oh yeah you know actually uh all the reasons you are giving is good but you know i love my mother or my father i don't want to do this that you know or i love him i love her or whatever you know some some emotional reason will be given so uh and at that point of time that person who is in moon mahadasha will mostly prioritize that because that's how the person is feeling so we should address that concern uh Along with the other practical, real, realistic scenarios with logic, as I said. Uh, but yeah, when 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 Moon Dasha is going on, a person a person will be tempted to put emotions on a on a higher pedestal compared to logic, which is not all wrong. You uh, can give person necessary safety that yes, uh, you want to make a decision out of your emotions, like something very simple, like you know, should I buy a house or should I stay in rent? You know, yeah. if, if you go YouTube and search, you know, you'll get a thousand videos which will tell you all the calculations, okay? But what they always miss is that you know, when you have your own house, you have that you know, that comfort element, you know. So, uh, yeah, so if you are dealing with somebody who is in Moon Mahadasha, then uh, the person might have some concerns, which uh, he or she may not tell you in the first place. But you have to kind of uh, question them and kind of, you have to know the pulse, basically, because uh, in in uh, like Sun Dasha or other Dashas, as we will discuss now, you, the person may be very direct and blunt. Yeah. But in Dasha, sometimes the person <laughs> himself may not know what he or she wants. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> I think so that you, you said of... very, yeah, you said very right because you know uh, when you put your logic into emotions, it's actually singing and dancing. Yes, right? yes. When you when you really want to show your emotions to anyone, right? Suppose uh, it's your brother's marriage or son's marriage, right? Why do you sing and dance? Right? Why right. do you spend it? Just to show your emotions. Correct, correct. We are very happy. Yes. Right? So even if some of the relatives are not happy, still they are also singing and dancing. 
<laughs> right? Just to show their emotions that they are happy. Yes, 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 yes. Right? So it's this really is good. one remedy which is very, very important, uh, you know, in the Chandra Mahadasha. And then a lot of other remedies, they just will fall in place for you. And now talking about the Mars uh, Mahadasha and the one super remedy that I have seen is uh, Babaji Ji's charity. Okay. Because you see, Mars is strength. Mars is logical thinking. That logic that goes in the mind, the energy for that logic comes from Mangal. It comes from Mars. And uh, so all the charities that you're doing are governed by Mars, Mangal, in any chart. So if you want to see, you know, someone will come and say, you know, Aramiji, I'll uh, give me a remedy. I My aim is to earn a lot of money. And then I also want to do so many things in charity. I want to open this school for underprivileged children. I want to open an old age home. And uh, so I would come to know within a minute that after getting the money, this person will do it or not. And no. that is seen from the position of your Mars. Because mm -hmm. Mars is one graha which governs your charity. So if you have a really strong Mars in your horoscope, the scope of, you know, you doing charities will be a lot. A okay. lot. Right? So that's what. And when you are in your Mars, Mahadasha, it becomes extremely important for you to do all the intelligent uh, charities. You know, start donating every single day. Right? And also help people physically for an example if you're walking on the road and you see someone wants to cross the road even that is also a dan that is also a charity right feeding birds and feeding animals and humans and you know so all these things especially when you have mars mahadasha keep some chocolates biscuits fruits in your vehicle and wherever you find someone some needy just go oh, and okay. especially if you are in asian countries especially if you're in indian countries you know, I remember in my Mars Antardasha, and still in my car, you'll always find some biscuits, you know, some cookies. You'll always find, you know, some fruits or some chocolates. So wherever I see people, I keep giving them. You know why? Because I'm Aries and I'm a Mars Lagna, right? So if you are, if you have Scorpio Lagna, and trust me, when it comes to charities, Scorpio Lagna or Scorpio Rashi becomes very important. People with Scorpio Lagna can charity a lot because as compared to Aries and Scorpio, Scorpio is more powerful in giving away things. Okay. And, and Scorpio people will do a lot of secret charities. I mean, oh. you know, if, if anonymous people, kiska danaya, no, no one knows. Yeah. Yeah. And just giving the money away and keeping their name as secret, their identity as secret. That's what Scorpio. And Scorpio people will also take some things from home and secretly give it to uh, you know, the people around. So that's so beautiful. You know, Shiva yes. and Krishna loves it. Loves it. Right? So Mars is all about charity because the action that we can do in spirituality is charity. You know? Right. Yeah, so that's about the Mars Mahadasha. This something that you want me to say, okay, you know, I have a really bad period in Mars. I'm getting hits every day. I broke my leg, you know, it's bleeding. My gums are bleeding, you know, and I have, you know, severe piles and everything. Just start donating. Simple. When you are speaking of donations, it's so... <laughs> interesting because just two days back I was hearing a lecture satsang program Yeah. so the Guruji was telling in that lecture that in the Vedic times Satyuga, Dwapar Yuga, Treta Yuga even you know, before in Kali Yuga whenever people uh, they, nobody would invest money into stock markets right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but 
whenever they would get money and they would be like oh i how can i multiply this money you know the the best thing they would do immediately is go and give a part of it in charity you would cause because they knew this uh, vedic signs that uh, it is said when you give charity to a person uh, who uses your money for wrong reasons and you are not aware of it then in next life he was telling the the same amount comes back to you the exact same amount yeah but if you give money to somebody and he has put it in a good into a good cause you know then depending on that it can come back to you 100 times or even 1000 times or maybe even more yeah. and if you give it to a if you give it to a brahmana because the brahmana will put it to good work you know scriptural learning educating others you know teaching others about veda anta and bhagavad gita and all this it will return like you know a million times one penny it will return back to you <laughs> so it's very interesting that that you say this and uh, i i just get a recall you, of what i heard <laughs> you you said it very well and uh... you know what i say uh, to my clients and to my followers also is that mars is manager of your spiritual pursuits that you do right so he's going to manage that how and where are you taking your spirituality so it's very important to have good mars i mean a lot right. of people say it's the you know planet of action it's planet of your sexual energy and fights he's a soldier but actually mars is the manager of your spirituality Yes, yes, that is very true. That is very true, and I think all these yagya and all the fire elements and all this, this yeah. fire, I mean, literally that comes under Mars, and yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it's very interesting. And the best the manager, fire... you know, and the best manager someone could get is the manager that Shri Ram has got in his life is Shri Anumati. You know, he's the best manager for Shri Ram. He managed everything for him. Yes, yes, yes. That is represented by Mangal. You just say, and it is. <laughs> so, you know, so we can come to Mercury now. Mercury is your yes. speed. Okay, Mercury is your intelligence. Mercury is your problem-solving ability. So, if you ask me one word for Mercury, I said wherever your Mercury is, there in your chart, sixth house, seventh house, eighth house. you will have great problem solving ability there oh, so, okay simple one word definition and you can relate the entire world to it correct right so if you have mercury in your 7th house you have great problem solving ability in your marriage anything that comes to your marriage you will have either you write it down or you will speak it out or intelligently you will try to manage things if you have mercury in the fourth house you have great problem solving ability at your home you'll be able to resolve issues and that is why the highest level of problem solving ability is required in the sixth house where mercury gets exalted in the kal purusha oh okay i you know, see if you want to solve a rog shok karja rin bimari shatru anything you know which is related to debts or you know problems or you know your diseases i mean to fight a disease is a problem solving ability that a doctor has right, right. so mercury is represented by purana vishnu right hmm. some purana vishnu so vishnu purana and doing vishnu sahasranama writing down the mantras writing down the ram naam so if you have a mercury dasha ladies and gentlemen get a beautiful book okay a, a notebook and a pen and start writing ram 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 or name of any deity that you like or love or you've done mantras in your past just start writing the names of god you can start writing wahe guru wahe guru wahe guru you can start writing jesus 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 you can start writing allah allah and things will start falling in place for you Mm. No matter whatever remedy you are doing, just start writing Vishnu, 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 and you will see things start working for you. That's something because you know eventually the last state of any problem, even if you get forgiveness or you get punished, 
it is going to come in writing. Mm, yeah, yes. The judge is going to write and sign and say, okay, hang him to the death. Or yes. you signed. Thank you. So it, the last problem solving, the last step is to write it and give it. <laughs> so when you write and give it to your God, when you start writing Ram, 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 that's when the issues are resolved. Yes, Mercury, I mean, uh, it's very interesting because I remember four or five years back in my channel once, uh, Ryan Kurzak, he, he came. Okay. So he said something very interesting, and I have quoted this many, many, many times since yeah. those years. Yeah. He said, he said, whenever I see a chart which has two good planets, or two strong planets, which is Mars and another is Mercury. Then I know this person will be able to overcome any challenge. Yeah. No matter how how bad the other planets are, how bad your Dasha is, how bad your uh, Atma Karaka or your Lagnesh, anything, how, how difficult they are. But if these two planets, yeah. Mars and Mercury, they are well placed, then it's a matter of time you will come out of it. So... <laughs> very beautiful yeah and mercury is also like you know uh, contacts basically you know so so many times i have seen people who have a bad mercury they think oh i will not have contacts but yeah. actually it can be opposite also the problem with a bad mercury is either you will not have good contacts when you need or you will be so selfish that you will only contact a person when you need him Correct, correct. So, uh, so therefore, uh, people who have a bad mercury, uh, they need to understand that ultimately whoever is helping you at your need is also a person. Right. So, you should have a basic human connection with them. You know, some basic communication should be there. You may not, you don't have to be best friends. You don't have to donate money to that person. But uh, if you only contact somebody, yeah. When you are in desperate need, and on the other hand, when that person needs you, you are not <laughs> helping that person. Then this is also not good. So I I think people, uh, one remedy for mercury that I have seen is, uh, when when things are going good, you know everything is normal. I mean, uh, with some, some there there are no major fundamental problems. You are doing good in life. You know, keep checking on the people, you know, your contacts, your friends, your relatives, you know, keep checking on them, see how they are doing. And uh, because uh, that will give you human connection. And recently I saw there was a study. It was a very interesting study. It was uh, posted. It, it was done somewhere in the US. It was it was a study based on longevity, how long people live. All right. So in that they found uh, there are so many factors, you know, depending on uh, that if you have this, you will live this many years longer. Yeah. If you don't have this, minus, five years minus. Yeah. <laughs> so in that they found the number one thing which was uh, there. I mean, and this is like, this, this, this will drag your longevity score like anything. Okay? If you have this, <clears throat> it was said that if you have at least two or three people or at least one person in your life, that person can be anybody, your spouse, your father, mother, children, your neighbor, best friend, or anybody. It doesn't have to be your family member. True. With whom you can share anything that you want to share without thinking of how that person will judge you or without the fear that this person will leave me if I share something. So... If you have that kind of relationship where you are like uh, your inside and out is completely the same, there is no pretension, then your longevity goes miles up compared to other things. You know, if you have money or health problem, this or that, you know, it, it was very surprising and very shocking for everybody to find that it is so important to have genuine human connections. You know, right. and Mercury, Mercury is the Karaka for relatives, and uh, nowadays especially you know with people like in china especially i was seeing a documentary that you know people they have this one child policy they have had it from last 30 40 years so people the kids who are born they don't have any uncle 
they don't have any auntie they don't have any chacha they don't have any mossy they don't have brother they don't have brother sister what to speak of relatives <laughs> So that in turn is causing psychological disorders. You know, people feel lonely. They feel like pampered, over pampered. And, you know, nervous system. That is also mercury, you know, nerves and all this. So things are so connected. I I, I, I was amazed to see this. <laughs> That's a beautiful insight you've given. And, you know, the second step is uh, that if you don't have anyone to whom you can share, definitely you're going to have a longevity hit for sure. I right. am you know, so short of this. But then, you know, for the people who don't have such connections, one thing they can do is they can write and vent out. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Certainly, yes. If you write it down your emotions and you're not supposed to read that again, if they are negative emotions, just go and just put in the running water and come back and write again. Because when you write about your negative times, Yes. And there is no motivation in it. And if you start reading them again, you just, you know, recall depression again. Write it down once. So whatever bad has happened with you, you're not supposed to read it again, what you've written. Mm -hmm. and just And the best thing would be if you can write Ram, Ram, Ram. Or best thing, if you could write Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. That's it. That's one thing which is a must in your Mercury's Mahadasha. Okay, so, so now we can go to Jupiter's Mahadasha. And yes. Jupiter uh, is the giver of mantra. Mm. Jupiter, Jupiter is very, very wise. Jupiter stands for Vedanta. Jupiter is supreme knowledge. And when I say Jupiter, if I have to define Jupiter, I would say it's the combination of Narayan and Shiva. And I'm mm. not saying Vishnu. I am saying the Narayan group of Vishnu. Narayan and Shiva. Narayan is the Rupa of Vishnu, which is for the humankind. Which mm -hmm. tells you that how you are supposed to live and how you are supposed to survive and how you are to fight and sustain yourself with your Prarabdha, with all the sufferings. Right. And that you know, energy that you get you know, to fight against the difficult situation. You know, people will come and say, Ramit sir, I have a very bad Jupiter Dasha. I have health problems. My back is gone. My Jupiter is in the 8th house. I have a severe backache. I'm getting my surgeries done. Nothing is working. I have Jupiter in the Lagna. I'm near to diabetes. My weight is increasing. You know, all these things. But, and then say, you know, how will I get strength to fight against you know, these situations. How will I get that energy to face my Prarabdha? The only thing is by doing the mantras. So when you do your malas, when you do your mantras, right? when you go to spiritual places, when you read Vishnu Purana or when you read Shiva Purana, these things give you strength to face your karma. Whatever bad or good you have done, because of which you are suffering, you know it is not going to impact your mind. This is what I said in many videos that if it is very cold outside and you don't feel cold, you don't feel cold. So, yeah. Right? Yes. That is the responsibility of Jupiter not to make you feel. Mm. You know what you have. It is like an anesthesia. So when you do these mantras. You know, even if you have a huge surgery, right, you're not going to feel it. You will feel as if you were just here. And then when you wake up half, you will say, have I been operated? Is it done? So you will say, yeah, you've been done. You're fine. You're out the, you know, OT from last two hours. Oh, really? It was just, you know, so you just slept and you woke up and everything was done. If you want your life like that, you have to do mantras. And mantras mm -hmm. can be from any religion. It could be any stotrams that you do in Jupiter Dasha, visit, you know, spiritual places. And for 90% of the people I've seen in Jupiter Dasha would make your things little slow and would take you towards spirituality. The inner transformation starts happening in the 
Jupiter Mahadasha and that only comes with Jnana, the real knowledge. And it can come in a very harder way that you are sitting home, paralyzed with your lower body or not be able to go to your work and then you start reading something which Jupiter wanted you to read without you getting paralyzed, right? So that's what Jupiter is all about. And reading, doing mantras is extremely important in Jupiter Mahadasha. Try to be sattvic as much you can. Yes, yes. I think for Jupiter, I mean, uh, at, at, at the end, it is all about this coat which you can wear. It's like the raincoat, as you said, no? Yeah. It, it's cold outside, but you don't feel the yeah. cold. Yeah. So it is all about how you can, because as they say, no, you cannot stop the rains, but you know, you you can you can wear a coat so that the rain doesn't affect you anymore. You don't fall sick. So 90% and this is unfortunate. 90 or rather 99% of the people or 99% of the times when a person has problems, you know, they'll always go for, oh, this totka, this remedy, this, that, you know, they're like, want something. It's like some quick solution. But then what happens after three months, new dasha comes, there's a new problem. <laughs> Or after five years, your dasha changes. After 20 years, you know, your Venus Mahada shines, then another dasha comes. So then the problems will keep coming. And that's the only constant in this world. But if if we just try, if our entire energies are focused on removing or getting rid of problems, then yeah. uh, we are actually doing an injustice to the power inside of us because we can make ourselves so strong that the that those things are unstoppable. We cannot remain from them, but can stop getting affected. So then any problem comes, you know, you are fine. Today you earn a million dollars, you are fine. You lose a million dollars, you are still fine. You know. <laughs> so I think uh, reading the scriptures, elevating our consciousness, as you said, you know, that is very vital in Jupiter and uh, there is no substitute for that. It is something we have to do we have to put efforts. Like recently I saw there was a video where there was a big businessman, mm -hmm. uh, Anil Ambani. Okay. So he was like, I mean, not I didn't see somebody was talking about him. He said, this person who was speaking, he went to Mumbai and he was seeing that Anil Ambani was, you know, running, jogging with, you know, some four or five bodyguards. <laughs> And then he was thinking, oh, this person is, I don't know, he's bankrupt or he's a billionaire or whoever he is. He, he can delegate so many things, no? Yeah. Oh, I want this, call up. Ah, Leo. <laughs> I want that. Oh, yes, it's there. But can he delegate his exercise? <laughs> so when I saw this, I was, I, I was thinking, wow, I mean, not if it is true for the physical side, no? Can we delegate our mantras? Can we tell people like sometimes, you know, I have seen mothers will ask this question to me sometimes. Oh, my son or my daughter, they are spoiled. They don't want to chant mantras. Even if I tell, they will not chant. Can I chant for them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then I tell them, well, of course you can chant and you can pray to God, you know, that they get some of your Sukriti and all this, but at the end you can't eat for them, right? So they have to do it themselves. Of course, that can have some benefits, but they have to do it. So it's like, you got to do it. <laughs> you know what? I got similar cases that, you know, this guy said that I don't believe in all this and I can't chant any of the mantras. So I asked him, to whom do you love the most in this world? So I love my parents the most. I love my mother, my father. And uh, I said, can you chant their names every day? Like one mala of the name of your father and one mala of uh, your mother. I said, yes, I can do that. I said, just take, do that. Just do one mala complete. Maybe your father's name is Ramesh. So just do Ramesh, 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 Ramesh. One mala and one mala for your names of your name of your mother. And trust me, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to give you equal results of chanting Ram Nam. Equal results. 
100%. Because in my most difficult times, Baba Ji Ji, when I'm really stuck, all I do is I chant my mother and father name together, one mala. Okay. Nice. Right? Because I have not seen God. I can see them. And they were carrying me in most of my difficult times. Okay. So all those people who don't believe in God, believe in parents, right? They can chant, you know, the name of their parents, which is equal to God. Correct, correct, correct. You don't need any religion for it. You don't need any dharma for it. All you have to do is just take my words blindly and do it. And you will see different results. Correct, correct. That is very true. And one thing I am remembering now in, in regards to this when you are saying that this is actually about you. <laughs> so I will take the liberty to speak sure. this. Sure. 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 Uh, I, I was very fortunate to meet you, visit you uh, in Ludhiana somewhere, I guess, October or end of September 2022. Yeah. So then when I went to your house, uh, you I, I saw your mother. So yeah. then when when I greeted her, uh, then I, I was just having some casual basic conversation with her. And then she told me about you that uh, she said in Hindi, maybe I'll <laughs> yeah. Yeah. say in English. Uh, she said, it's not so much. Nobody does so much for uh, their their parents as you are doing. So uh, most of the times when I feel I see people around me as astrology clients or my relatives, my friends, the elders, they are always complaining. Oh, my son doesn't even call me. My daughter doesn't inquire or whatever. Uh, but very rarely have I found somebody, uh, <laughs> uh, some mother or some father telling like this to, to some stranger that, oh, my son has done so much for me. So uh, that was very, uh, that was very heartwarming for me to hear. And uh, I was like, yes, maybe I don't know about other things, but surely uh, your mother's blessings will always work for you. <laughs> <laughs> as always, it has always worked for me. Chalo, so next week, well, thank you, Babaji. I was getting emotional. So, uh, Venus, Mahadasha. Venus is Daitya Guru. And uh, he is Yajurved. In all mm. the Vedas. Shukrachara is Yajurved. Start reading Yajurveda or bring Yajurved home. If you have Venus Mahadasha, keep it in a very beautiful, sacred place. And he is all the female deities. Mm. All the Durga Savrupas is Shukra. And you can start doing Durga mantras or you can start learning Dash Mahavidya. You can become devotee of, uh, uh, of, of uh, Mahakali. You see, the Navamsha chart, fourth house, is known mm. as the house of Vidya. Okay. And the planet sitting in the fourth house represents one of the Dash Mahavidyas. Oh, yes. Yes. So, for an example, moon, you know, represents like Bhuvaneshwari Devi. Okay. Like, uh, you know, for an example, Mars represent Bhagla Mukhi. So, you know, there's a list. I mean, we can discuss this some other day. So from the fourth house of your Navamsha, you know, you can choose, you know, your, uh, you know, Shri Mahavidya. And, you know, you can start doing the mantras under some supervision. Or if you can't do those in under supervision, you don't have a guru, just simply start doing Durga Chalisas or visit at least a Durga Devi mantra, a mandir or a temple once, you know, a year, right? Around your birthday or around your Tithi Pravesh. So just go and visit that, uh, you know, temple of Durga Devi. And you can do it for your mother, Mary. 
you can you can go it there right so it's that energy is everywhere everywhere in all the dharma you have that energy so when you start praying to female deities when you start praying to durga devi this is one of the superb remedies of venus venus mahadasha will also make you a devotee of krishna and shiva but you know your prayers will be answered through durga devi that is for sure right so that's something that you need to uh, be careful and focused in the venus mahadasha and one last thing regarding venus uh, regarding the dash mahavidyas as you said you know many people are aware of this but just in case you are not aware and you want to visit some temple then i can recommend you can always visit haridwar there we have, you can go to kankhal uh, yeah. there you have this temple of dash mahavidya there you can visit yeah and it's very, it's very surprising i'll um, why, why it's very important because uh, 2018 i was fortunate to be there with uh, another person so then when i went there i i suddenly remembered that, you know this dashma vidyas they are very powerful and uh, they can also help in marriage you know if somebody is looking for marriage you know they are not getting married they can pray to them so then somehow i contacted another astrologer you know because this person was wanting to get married and it was not happening the one with whom i went and then i like did some analysis of this chart and then then there was one one of the dashma vidyas who was representing something in his chart and then i told please pray to this uh, to this devi uh, properly then then he sincerely prayed hmm. then when i came back uh within 3 months he gave me the news that his marriage is fixed wow. and in april 2019 he got married around that time mm -hmm. i was like wow yeah <laughs> and he did not do any elaborate puja or he did not give like a big donation or something he just made some simple prayers you know yeah. but it was like on spot instantly i was seeing results so how can i not speak about it Yeah, so that's something, and uh, you know, Venus is card of marriage. You know, that's right. the most important thing, and completely relates to what I'm saying. And also, you know, Venus also represents Yakshinis. So especially if you have Venus and Rahu combination in your horoscope, you can be a very good tantric. You can mm -hmm. be a tantric who has a Devi Shakti in in you. You know. Oh. So, that's also a great combination and if you are getting inclinations towards it with venus and rahu together in your chart right it is the call of that yakshini devi and you know you can go ahead if you can if you are mentally prepared for it so that's also you know something very very important uh going to saturn uh, baba ji ji saturn is uh, tapasya he is tapasvi okay no. so when you are in saturn mahadasha and i mean a lot of people can know oh, my saturn mahadasha is like nothing everything is stopped you know nothing is working i don't want to work and this and that you see tapasya people will always think that you go into jungles or sit at your home and then do the tapasya that's not tapasya mm -hmm. okay tapasya is suppose i promise myself to go to a temple sharp 6:30 in the morning every single day of my next 19 years hmm there could be some odd days when i am traveling there could be times when i am in a flight so you exempt those days but yes. there is very very strong commitment of going to the temple even if it is raining or whatever 6:30 or there at the temple in the morning or you go barefoot or you leave something that you eat the most right mm. tapasya right? right right so you when whenever you are making some sacrifices right that is known as tapna means you are burning that desire yes yes tapasya is actually burning your desires and if you can burn a desire with your will power that is tapasya so in shani's mahadasha if you getting really bad results you have to initiate a tapasya in your life 
and tapasya is not leaving everything and sitting in your dhyana for five hours or 10 hours or three days or 20 days. No, that's not tapasya. Tapasya is when you commit yourself and you do not. You know, I, I remember a person who just came to me and he said, uh, Navneetji, I have this problem of watching uh, you know, a lot of uh, porn movies and adult movies and I'm seriously in trouble. And he was in serious, this Shani's Mahadasha and uh, he said, is there a way I can come out of this situation? And, you know, I, I start hating myself, right? And then I do it again and again and again. I said that, you see, you're in the Saturn Mahadasha and Saturn is, you know, trying to check you whether, you know, and you, you, you are taking this consultation on Saturday and it was Saturn Hora when I was giving him the consultation on Saturday, early in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I said the message is that you have to commit and do small, short commitments one week. 10 days, you will not watch it. 15 days, you will not watch it. And a month and two months or three months. And you know what? He came back to me after six months, a reconsultation. He said, I did this tapasya as a remedy. Mm -hmm for my Saturn Dasha to, you know, help me out. He got a job, right? And within three months, he got the recognition, right? He was, although he did not get any monetarily benefit, but he was made a team lead immediately. His health mm -hmm. has improved. His spirituality improved. The girl who had a breakup, which put him in a severe depression, the, the girl came back in his life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with one tapasya and he would see said Namita, if today someone give me a billion rupees or a billion dollars and say watch this for 10 minutes I'll not do it mm. it's my tapasya it's my commitment with the God it's my commitment with you Namita. that's what Shani wants from you the tapasya the time you become tapasvi, Shani is going to help you. And Shani is very interesting because he he makes you believe that he's giving you problems. But actually what he's doing is he's giving he's showing you the results of some of your blunders bit by bit so that you don't completely collapse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there was one person, his Shani Dasha started and he got a consultation from me, he said, oh, sir, I've been drinking, you know, from 10 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on and off, more or less, yeah. <laughs> but I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything was fine, you know, Guru Dasha, great time. And, and then, of yeah. course, uh, <laughs> yeah. Dasha changes after Guru. Yeah. <laughs> And then Shani Dasha came and uh, this person, he, he said, oh, sir, now my liver is in a very precarious state. Yeah. So why is Shani doing this to me? He asked me. Yeah. I said, uh, is Shani doing this to you or you did it to yourself? Correct. Yeah. And he's just telling you that you are now in this, you know, whatever fatty liver, cirrhosis or whatever stage. If it was any other planet, yeah, and would have not given you one, then one day you go to the hospital and doctor says, That's it, you are out of this world. Three months and you are not living. Yeah. Last stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you want that? Would you be happy if you would have heard that? Okay, 10 years you do this. So some other Graha Dasha was there. After 10 years, one day, oh, yeah, that's it, sir. You're done for this life. Or are you happy now that now you can at least change? Right. You can, right. You can at least live. You, right. know, you can do many things. Even if you live for five years, you, you can do so many things. Right? <clears throat> yeah. So then he said, oh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm very happy to hear this, you know, because I, I was thinking that Shani is causing problems. But then I'm like, no, he's not causing. He's He wants to save you from bigger problems. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. During Shani, we have to like 
opportunities, you know. Even if Shani is very well placed, sometimes I see people they're like, "Oh, I, I, life is good," yeah. but then I, because your Shani is so good, so you are not having problems. So then you should voluntarily take some problem. Yeah. Like in Kartik Mass, they like Krishna devotees, they take a vow. Yeah. Oh, so I will not take sweet, no sugar, no jaggery, no nothing. Thirty days. Yes. Voluntary. It is like voluntarily you take some punishment on yourself. Yeah. That's and the more saying. punishment, yeah. yeah, the more and, you... Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> so now we'll talk about Rahu. Rahu yeah. is Durga. <laughs> Rahu yes. is Shiva Shruti. Rahu is... Uh, I would say Rahu is Krishna of Kali <laughs> This has a very deep meaning. And uh, you see, when you are in your Rahu, you know, Mahadasha, the most important thing is to take a Guru Diksha. Right? Because whenever a Guru gives you a Diksha or a Mantra, he is going to keep his hand on your head. Hmm. And then he is going to say something in your ear. Correct. Right. So that is the moment when you transform your Rahu into a very devotional Rahu. Correct. You have to understand this thing. Because when once Rahu becomes devotional, I mean, it is a blast of devotion. <laughs> Correct. Right. It's like a bomb blast of devotion. And that blast will take away everything. All your Shadripus will go, you know, Prabhupada has said one thing that, you know, there was a devotee asking him, I just heard one of his lectures, he said that uh, we do this, you know, this is a spiritual routine, this is what we do, we get up uh, early in the morning, we do this, we do that, and then I go to a temple, I let a diya, I do these charities and all that. He said, you're not supposed to do anything, Prabhupada says. When you do Krishna Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. You do this with your 100% devotion. He said, look at my devotees. They are bathing in the morning, attending Mangala Arti at 4 in the morning. right? And then in the evening, they are taking the shower again and doing their own 16, 32, 64 rounds. You're not supposed to do anything else. Every parihara, everything is covered in it. And for that, you have to first convert your Rahu. Mm. And when you convert that Rahu into a devotional Rahu, and that can only happen either through Durga Shakti or through Krishna devotion. There's no other way. There are two deities when you become extremely devoted to, they will transform you quickly. When you are devoted to Hanumanji, Hanumanji will not transform you. He will help you all the time. He will keep on helping you all the time. But the two Shaktis that will transform you completely is Krishna and Durga. And if you people are hearing this, and if you are a Durga devotee, please message. If you are a Krishna devotee, please message. Did these Shaktis transform you or not? If you're looking for any sort of transformation, you know, you have to either go to Durga or you have to go to Krishna. And Rahu is done. Rahu is very interesting. And as you are saying this, I'm uh, I'm recalling there's one very famous verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Where Dishtir Maharaj is asking something to Lord Krishna. It is, I guess it's in the 10th canto. And Krishna is answering. He says, uh, Yasyaham anugrenami harishye taddhanam sana. He says, when I offer my special blessings to somebody, <laughs> I take away everything from him. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. of course, that sometimes uh, devotees interpret that in a sense, oh, everything material will be taken, you know, but Krishna can also take away your anarthas, you know? yes. <laughs> That is why the word Hari uh, is, is like Krishna's another name. Hari means 
one who is like a thief, one who steals. Now, what does he steal? Now, as Krishna, when he was a um, small boy, he would steal butter. But as Hari, he steals your anarthas, our problems, our insecurities, our fears, and all these things he steals away. <laughs> Yeah, that's so beautiful. That is very correct. Yeah. So last we discussed Ketu. And yes. Ketu is salvation. You know, Ketu is, I believe Ketu is Brahma Gyan. Hmm. Jupiter is also Gyana. Don't confuse Jupiter with Ketu. You know, Jupiter is also Mokshakarka. Ketu is also Mokshakarka. But I personally believe that Ketu is more superior to Jupiter. When it comes to Gyana. Because that Brahma Jnana is going to come when you are in complete Mona. Mona means silence. And Ketu is your Mon Vrata. You know? So if you are in Ketu Mahadasha, there are 100% chances that you can touch that Brahma Jnana. For sure, in those seven years. But then the one best remedy that you're supposed to do for Ketu is that you have to do Mon Brata. Start with an hour of Mon Brata every day. Fix a time. One o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock, early morning. Early morning, it is the easiest one, right? Because nobody's calling, nobody's bothering, right? Or you can do in the midnight or in the late evening. The most difficult one is in the afternoon, right? If you can do it between one to two, right? Start it from Tuesday. Begin no. this from Tuesday to give a message to Ketu that, okay, we, we're doing it, you know, based on your energies. We need your blessings. Right? Start from Tuesday and start doing the Monavrata. And in the Monavrata, try to meditate. Don't even talk to yourself. Monavrata, you know, it's very difficult to learn the art of Monavrata. In Monavrata, you remain quiet, but somebody calls you, you know, in the mind, you are talking to yourself. You're not supposed yeah. to do that as well. You're not supposed to look at your phone. You're silent. You're looking at your phone. It's not a mon vrata. There is some communication going on. You have to yeah. come to the communications and then practice mon vrata. Your ketu dasha will be a piece of cake. You know, because ketu will do certain events in your life which will make you silent. Mm. You lose a job. You're silent. You know what happened? Sab aapko aake puchenge kya hua? To chup chup beta hai. Why you're so silent? Oh, man, I lost my job. You know, she divorced me. Maximum divorces will happen in Ketu Mahadesh. Yes. They'll say, oh no, somebody comes in my Mercury Dasha and I'm running this case and I'm in uh, in my last stage of Mercury. I said, wait for Ketu to come. In the first month, you'll get the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Ketu is going to make you silent when you lose someone, when you lose a parent. You know, that happens many times in Ketu Mahadesha, right? It will make you silent. Grief will make you silent. That is why when someone has gone from this world, we say, let's keep silence for a minute. Yes. Usually, they are, you know, catering to the energy of Ketu. Right? Because we are keeping silent that he can get the moksha. But I mean, he gets or not is his karma. You know, but on the same time, Ketu is Mon Vrata. So whenever you are in Ketu Mahadasha, ladies and gentlemen, practice silence. Simple. And I think Ketu is also related to Ganesh. Yeah. Yes. And because of that, they always say that Ganpati, his ears are very big. Huge yeah. ears. Yeah. And God has given us one mouth and two ears. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But people do the opposite most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Absolutely. They cannot listen. Like, they, they cannot hear. They cannot. It is like, once I was seeing a podcast, some other person was saying this. There's this is a very big pandemic in the world which nobody is talking about. It is that when you meet somebody, the person is only talking about themselves. They, they, they can't ask, how are you? How are things in your life? They are so obsessed with themselves. 
they will only talk <laughs> they, they will not listen this is also a pandemic i mean absolutely yeah. even i have so many people when i meet them like or when i talk to them i mean most of the times i have seen uh, people struggle with this you know and everybody struggles i also struggle so many other people tell me they also struggle so i guess yes sometimes if because in scripture sometimes the tongue is considered is compared to a snake yes 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 like the the especially the, uh, the tongue of the frog yeah so when the frog is like croaking like you know making the sounds yeah. then what is happening he's the he frog is thinking i'm impressing this she frog yeah but you know my sweet sound but what is happening the ajgar the python is coming the anaconda is coming and devouring you from the back and yeah. once it devours, then that's it so okay. i guess the krishna also says this in the bhagavad gita you know like austerities of speech anudvegam karam vakyam satyam priyam hitam chayat he says um, yeah so i guess we should only speak when it is required or else uh, we should uh, keep <laughs> mind <laughs> i think uh, baba ji this is such a great and divine discussion i think uh, it is the you know blessing of krishna and mahadev because of which we have been able to uh, you know <laughs> converse it and honestly speaking ladies and gentlemen we did not prepare for this conversation we just wanted to meet and just wanted krishna to take this conversation ahead and i think krishna has taken it so thank you for watching and please also subscribe to baba ji ji's channel he's got thousands of videos uh, on his youtube channel and i have learned so many things from him so many things from him right hare krishna hare krishna and in case somebody has uh, from my channel you are seeing and you have not subscribed to navni ji's channel then please go there and Navini ji has also done some very interesting interviews recently and also he'll be doing further. So please stay tuned to his channel and uh, I'm very sure you will be benefited beyond your dreams. All right. So please go and subscribe and watch his videos. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you.